Hello, we are students from uh, CCV and uh, we're here to talk about uh, housing and sustainability and some of the projects we did individually. Um, we're going to go around and introduce ourselves first. Uh, I'm Nick and we'll start to my right. I'm Nashran. Um, my research was about homelessness in Vermont, um, especially in regards to veterans and youth and young adults. I'm Jake and I did the housing crisis in Vermont. I'm Dylan. I uh, also studied homelessness. I'm Kai. I also did the housing crisis, but I focused more on solutions. And I'm Carly, and I focused a lot on environmental sustainability, a lot regarding climate change and what we can do about it and what we're not doing that we could be. Uh, I had studied the City Place Project in Burlington, so essentially the huge hole in the ground where the mall used to stand. Um, so I think what we're going to do is kind of go around and talk about the, the individual projects and the takeaways that we got from them. Um, so again, we'll just go in a circle and not sure. Yep. So um, after I did my research, I understand that the government works hand in hand with um, the stakeholders in every state in the U.S. Um, to fight homelessness. And it is important that they work alongside with these stakeholders because the government needs, oh my God, I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the thing is, um, I'll talk about Burlington and veterans um, specifically. So um, many of the veterans <laughs> choose to um, move to Vermont because of the state benefits that they receive from the government and and this shows how the homeless, um, a lot of veterans choose to come to Vermont. They, um, they get a lot of benefits in terms of housing, a lot of benefits in terms of financial, like crisis and stuff like that. And is, it is important that the government works along with other agencies in the state to help them provide with the basic necessities they need in order to live life. Uh, I did, what I learned from my research is that the cost of living in Vermont is 21% larger than the national average, and Vermont is among the top 10 highest in property tax rates, and yeah. So uh, I, I studied homelessness and like what they're doing about the problem, <clears throat> they're like creating like more opportunities for like certain things to like help <laughs> to help them out and and like how the ongoing problem is and like there's becoming like less Oh, um, okay, so during my research, I found that uh, 12 million people um, in the U.S. annually pay 50% of their um, household income towards uh, their rent. And I also found that people in Vermont can't really live in Vermont without some kind of housing support, um, specifically low-income, middle-class people, and um, that... Um, with the minimum wage, which is 10, 78, um, you have to work 85 hours in order to afford a two-bedroom uh, house and 67 hours for a one-bedroom house. And the majority of your money probably just goes to rent, doesn't yes. it? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so some of the solutions that I came across during my research was, one, um, to increase the amount of houses in Burlington. Um, and they've been doing working on that project for a few years now, but it hasn't been going very great. And then um, other people like um, the Affordable Housing Coalition, I think, for Vermont, say that we need more assistance programs for people in Vermont in order for them to like be able to pay for housing, but also have enough money left for other expenses that they may have. Um, <clears throat> another thing that relates to that is 
ultimately, I feel like if we, well, in what I studied, um, Vermont is the second, has the second lowest carbon uh, footprint in the U.S. besides Washington, D.C., which is more of a city rather than a state, so it's a lot smaller. But even so, um, I feel like that kind of puts this, like, uh, facade of security in that, oh, we don't have to do much because we're not contributing, but I feel like that's not the case because um, if Vermont could be saving a lot of money if they switch to greener alternatives of energy, like renewable. Initially, it would be expensive. In the long run, it would save money by, you know, you wouldn't have to get oil constantly because oil isn't renewable and it's very expensive. But if you were to switch it to something like solar power, which has started becoming more affordable. Um, but yeah. Um, that, in a way, kind of ties into the thing that, uh, that I studied because I know with the City Place project there were proposals for um, renewable energy to run it, um, and it would be a, a big project if it's actually completed, um, if it's actually completed. So they started in, I think, early 2017 or late 2016. Um, there's been a lot of delays with it, obviously. Uh, a lot of that has come from like disagreements between the developers and the city council. Um, the developers got approval to lay foundation for it in late 2018, and it's almost 2020, and they still haven't laid the foundation for it. Um, and I think the way that connects to uh, what we've all been talking about is um, this this model of having more expensive housing units uh, in in the center of Burlington which would draw in people that generally have more money, which um, I, I think if that gets out of hand, the issue can be that it drives out people to live on the outskirts of Burlington, so you have this huge discrepancy in the, the price of housing. So, and, and it happens in a lot of other big cities too, is that Center City is very expensive, the outskirts is generally middle to lower class people. And so it creates this, this huge discrepancy and there isn't generally um, a big middle class. Uh, so that is a concern of mine when it comes to the, the new City Place project. Um, of course, it isn't finished yet, so we don't know if that's actually going to happen, but that is a, a, a big concern of mine. Um, so I, I guess what we can do here to wrap it up, um, we have two questions that I'm going to pose, and hopefully we can all kind of answer them together. Um, the first one I have, which is pretty broad, is do you think the issue of homelessness in our community, specifically in Burlington, do you think it's going to get any better? And do you think there are things specifically we can do to reduce it or make it better? So what I found out is that there is a long-term and a short-term solution to this. First of all, Tax the big tech companies. Why? Like here, if you tax tech companies by half percent, mm -hmm. you can earn up to $300 million of revenue. Gotcha. And then you can use that to, you know, um, build permanent supportive housings. That is a long-term solution. But for short term, you need to provide mental health support, which is very important in terms of... Um, especially for veterans and youth and young adults, because one, um, one of the major reasons why youth and young adults are homeless right now in Vermont is because of child abuse. And they need a lot of mental health support. And, and I think that's a very good way to go. And the other two solutions for short term um, are um, rental assistance mm -hmm. because um, not all veterans are uh, know where to go to um, to get help if they want to rent a house, and it's really hard for them to rent a house in Ver um, Vermont, especially because they don't have any history of renting a house in Vermont, which you know, which kind of you know not you know, it's it's hard for them to just you know rent a house because they don't have any history of doing it, and shelters. Um, like an open place where you can just go and you know get some sleep or get some food 
especially if you're like a young child, you need to go somewhere. You can't just, you know, sleep on the road and, you know, yeah. die, especially in this weather. It, it gets really cold in Vermont in the winter. So these are just some of the solutions that the government and the stakeholders in all the states in America can work towards. I know there's shelters in Burlington. I'm not entirely sure how many, but uh, I, I don't think it's a lot. So it's definitely yeah. something that could help people. Mm -hmm. I feel like we can talk a lot about like government shareholders, but I feel like as citizens, there's things that we can do to help this problem. Like for me, for instance, I work at the YMCA, which is a nonprofit, and we do a lot for families in need. Like I can find resources to help parents get diapers for their children, or I can provide snacks for my kids to give them food. And also just like on the side, I also um, reach out through Facebook groups and offer free childcare for like people who might need some assistance. Like say they need to go look for a job. Like I can watch their four-year-olds. So there's lots of different things people can do to support this population. So kind of more of a community model. Taking a care community of A community model, like say, like there's this um, one Facebook group, it's like buy nothing. And it's like, if someone needs help, you can lend them things. Like instead of going out and buying like say a generator, like here you can borrow mine and things like that. Maybe a community model, like if someone being the friendly neighbor, like, that kind of person being helpers. Anyone else have comments? Um, think, if you think the the issue of homelessness is going to get reduced, or I think I think it could. Um, to add on to like the rental rentals assistance, like um, a lot of the programs that I found when I was doing research were things like that. They had um, subsid subsid subsidized yep. yeah where they um the government would pay a portion of your rent give it to um the the landlord um so that you know you have like this much left to pay and then you could cover that and i think we definitely need more programs like that especially for um low income and middle class people like you said um, they're gonna have to pay for childcare in mm -hmm. order to work, which is another expense. And then, you know, other bills like, you know, heating and electricity, things like that. Um, as for, I don't, maybe building more houses, it could be a good solution, but like Nick said, if it's like gonna be expensive houses and there's no point in building them because then people still can't afford them. Well, what if you build, so I know tiny houses like are kind of like this trend Oh yeah. and they're not super expensive to build, but what if you had like a nice, like beautiful plot of land and just put like some small little houses because a lot of people, like most people I've met who struggle with money, they're like, you know, I don't even want a big house. I just want somewhere to live and you can have it because in reality, you don't need a huge house to survive. You need a small area, but if you made the land beautiful so people could be outside and enjoy the weather, it would be so much better and also be more sustainable because you see these huge houses, but imagine like how much carbon emissions are going into that. And a lot of these houses are old, so they're not powered sustainably. So it'd be interesting to see if that could be an option, like kind of a big plot of land where it's like a community of neighbors who are living in this like outdoor cookouts, like sharing food, you know. Mm -hmm. It would be really nice. It would be a nice community to live. It would be safe, good place to raise children. I think the issue with, with things like that, um, I think it's always funding. Yeah, it, it doesn't get funded. They're real like there's a lot of good ideas that are possible, but the lack of funding that the lack of funding, like the other things, like if you, I looked, I'd look on the mayor's website, they have a lot of other things they're focusing on. Like they're trying to do, um, they planted uh, storm drain gardens to like, so the storm drain water can go naturally into the plants, like make it beautiful, which is good. So it's not just like housing, like, there's a lot of different things you have to do to run a city and it's not easy but I mean there's all sorts of things that we could do and there's a lot of good ideas here. Mm -hmm. Yeah I would agree. Um, well let's see our next question was does it seem like Burlington uh, 
is going to become more expensive in the future. And I have, uh, unfortunately, I think it may, um, if the City Place project is actually completed at any point. Um, there's going to be a lot of, uh, of apartment units there, like I said, and I do fear the pricing for that. And as I had mentioned before, um, kind of the discrepancy between lower and higher classes of people um, when it comes to uh, the amount of money they make and how that might actually drive kind of a divide. Because um, I know there are definitely places in the center of Burlington that are already expensive to live in, um, but I fear that the, the divide will become uh, bigger uh, if that project is actually completed. And also, like I said earlier, we don't know because it's not actually completed yet, but um, that's kind of my theory on that. It's hardly started. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're bringing a couple machines back. They're what? They're bringing a couple machines back. Yeah, I'd hope so. Oh, <coughs> I saw. We'll see. All right, well, I think that is, uh, I think that's it for us, unless anyone else has anything else they'd like to add. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's it. Is that it? Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>think when you hear the word sustainability sustainability I have positive thoughts and I think about like something that's going to be able to survive into the future um, it can be it can be like a sustainable activity like something that you can continue doing for a long time throughout life or um, mostly I think about like um, renewable energy and um, ways to make the environment better um. I think it's about creating a society that can last for generations longer, not something that's just, you know, you use it once and then you toss it, and toss it in the trash or like using something and then completely just everything else being completely destroyed. I think it's about being able to continue to use things. I don't know. Yeah. Being able to just like live life um, without struggle or in a way that doesn't affect that doesn't neg negatively affect other people, if that makes sense, I guess. Uh, recycling, uh, like uh, being able to be kind of like an independent. Um. Do you think Vermont struggles with any issues regarding sustainability, be it um, environmental, economic? It's interesting because I, I think that Vermont is struggling for economic sustainability because even though Burlington area is is really popular and alive and vibrant uh, the cost of housing and some of the cost of living stuff is really tough in this area and then when you look at the rest of the state in terms of being able to have good jobs for people um, the population is dropping in other parts and that isn't sustainable either and there's parts of Vermont that are really beautiful that I wish there was more kind of uh, economic um, economic sustainability like definitely with homelessness there is an issue around that also like connecting to the homelessness um, like affordable living is a I think is a huge issue in Vermont specifically like in Burlington On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being without basic human necessities, 10 being living a fulfilling life without struggle, where do you think Vermont stands there? I would say probably a 6, just because, like I said before, we're doing better. We're definitely doing better than other states, but we're definitely not a 10, and I think there is room for improvement. Well, it's interesting because I was listening to uh, VPR, and there was a survey about uh, how lives in rural Vermont are really different than lives in this part of Vermont and also how um, economics play a huge part of it so that if you're if you're educated and if you have um, a good income then you are usually pretty satisfied and so and if you're you have less education or not a good income it's pretty dissatisfying to live in Vermont so where do I think Vermont is about halfway maybe maybe a six 
certainly the things that, that they're doing here kind of seem to look like that they're going in the right direction, what with the uh, recycling and uh, whatnot. It's a hard place to live, I think. I think um, economically it's, um, it's developed. I think Burlington is more and more for the affluent and I find that really disturbing. Um, I think housing is a huge issue in Burlington and I think that is part of sustainability. People don't have um, good places to live in Burlington. I would say, I mean, if you're living outside of Burlington, I would say probably not great. There's probably like fewer opportunities or job opportunities. I would say in Burlington, there's a decent amount. And I would say that I don't think the taxes or the rent is that high. That I would say it's pretty good, probably on average. Are you a student here? Yes. Yes, I'm a student here. There are exactly not exactly, about 1,291 people experiencing homelessness in Vermont, and of that, 169 were family households, 104 were veterans, 101 were unaccompanied young adults, and 160 were experiencing chronic homelessness. I'm not happy with the mayor. I don't feel like he has the best interest at heart for the working class people. And so I think that the gap, not just here in Vermont, but certainly here between the rich and the poor are, you know, is the divide is much bigger than it used to be. Well, I'm a high school teacher and one of the things, although I work in Winooski where the population has been pretty stable um, of the school. Most places in the state have actually lost a lot of population. And so from a teacher point of view, like all of the issues, not all, but many of the issues we have around education finance, I think wouldn't be such a big issue if we had still had the, the vibrant population of kids that we had back in the, like in the 1990s when I started teaching. Um, so I do think it's an issue. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, though, is I've heard the population is pretty stable, like that 10,000 have left, but 10,000 have also come in from other places. Um, but I think as long as people keep leaving the rural areas of Vermont, that is going to be a problem. So would you say overall you enjoy living here and has it been sustainable for you? I enjoy living here. I'm pretty lucky because I think I'm in an income bracket that makes it possible for me to live here but my daughter lives here and she's on poverty level and I can't really afford to support her and myself so I do see a lot of poverty here but it has been sustainable for me personally just because of my income. Thank you for your time. It was great. Thank you. All right, bye. I love you guys.